Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Molly Hendrickson with the latest from Denver 7. This morning, we continue to follow the latest on two mass shootings within 24 hours across the country. No matter how you stand politically or ideologically, we can all agree these shootings need to come to an end. Let's get you caught up on the latest here. 29 people were killed in those two shootings. 20 at an El Paso, Texas Walmart. Another nine in a busy entertainment district of Dayton, Ohio. More than 50 people total have been injured. New video shows the chaos in that entertainment district in Dayton. You can see people running for their lives. This video shows Dayton police shooting and killing the suspected shooter, but we've decided not to show that. Survivors say this is something you just can't prepare for. It's one of those, as I'm talking to you kind of thing, and you just hear it and you react. It's your first instinct. You don't really know what else to do because you don't know if it's coming in your direction or someone else's direction. The only thing you can think is just get out of the way and run. So in response to the shootings this morning, President Trump tweeted pushing for stronger background checks. Close to a month since US 36 first started collapsing in Westminster, you'll find new delays and closures today along the highway. Denver 7's Liz Gillardi has a new update on the progress there. Drivers traveling on US 36 can expect more delays. It's been nearly a month since the road started to crumble and that hole opened up. But let me show you what's been happening in the meantime. Crews have been working to dismantle this wall, getting ready for the rebuild. So you can expect overnight lane closures. That's beginning tonight. We also have pictures showing the progress that's being made so far. But these overnight lane closures will be through Wednesday, and it's so crucial crews can install an anti glare screen along the construction zone. The closures will be from 10 p.m. through 5 a.m. CDOT says it's making significant progress to remove the eastbound wall, as you can see in these photos, and also remove the pavement on top of the highway. At the beginning of last week, the design team was only 60% finished with the redesign, and they're hoping for more progress on that to get that redesign locked down so construction can begin. So here's what's next. The wall is expected to be removed in the next couple of weeks and the rebuild will begin right after. We're still wondering about the timeline, how long this is going to take, what the cost is going to be, and we're continuing to ask CDOT those questions. But again, in the meantime, drivers can expect more delays. Liz Gillardi, Denver 7. CDOT is expecting a rock slide today with boulders that are so large they'll likely have to be exploded to be removed. CDOT has been working in Boulder Canyon, widening Highway 119 since April. CDOT typically closes the road from 10 to 2, Monday through Thursday, for rock blasting work. But today's closure is from 10 a.m. to midnight. CDOT expects several large boulders to fall during today's blasting, and CDOT expects to have to blast those rocks a second time to make them small enough for removal. Adams County may be the first county in Colorado to extend the setbacks for new oil and gas wells. According to our partners at the Denver Post, county commissioners are considering a plan to increase the distance to 1,000 feet between wells and homes, schools, and daycare centers. That would be double the current standards. Adams County currently has a six-month moratorium on new well permits while it works out those new rules. It seems simple. You hit a crosswalk button to get the walk symbol, but a woman who uses a wheelchair says her nearby signal is broken. Cindy Olean crosses Wadsworth at 72nd to get to church, but she says the activation button on the southeast corner of the intersection isn't working. So she waits for the green traffic light and then simply crosses the street with her fingers crossed. When the signal first started malfunctioning, she thought she wasn't pushing the button hard enough push, 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 and nothing. And then I contacted the city of Arvada, who told me I had to contact the Department of Transportation because it's a highway. And they said they would get someone out here to fix it right away, and it's been a month. So the city of Arvada says the signals at that intersection are CDOT's responsibility since Wadsworth is a state highway. CDOT says they're trying to figure out whose responsibility it is. This morning and all week long here on Denver 7, we're helping you get the kids prepared to head back to school. It is that time. We all want our kids to be healthy and safe at school number one. And health officials say vaccinations are one way to do that. Denver 7's Nicole Brady joins us. And Nicole, this summer the state launched some efforts to increase vaccination rates. 
In June, Governor Polis signed an executive order directing health officials to study why immunization rates are lower in some parts of the state and to do more to educate the public. So this is one website you can visit, spreadthevaxfacts.com. The executive order came after numerous efforts earlier this year to increase the state's kindergarten vaccination rate. A bill in the state legislature would have made it more difficult to opt out of vaccines for personal belief reasons. That bill died. Colorado is one of just 15 states that allows a personal belief exemption. While the number of families using the exemption is relatively small, Colorado has one of the lowest rates in the nation for kindergartners vaccinated against measles, mumps, and rubella. And that nationwide measles outbreak last year has raised concerns that Colorado could be vulnerable. Really, the level of vaccination we have right now in the state is too low, we believe, to protect our communities, our schools from outbreaks of vaccine-preventable diseases like measles. Now, the state provides a way to find out your school or child care center's vaccination rate. It's covaxrates.org, and you can easily use this site to find the percentage of kids at your child's school who are up to date on their vaccines, as well as the number of exemptions at your child's school. All right, thanks, Nicole. It is Money Saving Monday, and today we have several free things to do with your family. Today, get free admission at Colorado State Parks in honor of Colorado Day. Tomorrow is a free day at the Denver Botanic Gardens at Chatfield Farms. This Friday is a free admission day at Four Mile Historic Park. Saturday is a free admission day at the Denver Firefighters Museum. When we think of a canine unit, we typically think of law enforcement or military, but that isn't the case here. Colorado Parks and Wildlife is in the middle of a pilot program where dogs are changing the way our state protects its wildlife. Denver 7 reporter Eric Lufer is taking a look at what the dogs are doing. Go find it. Come on. He's a unique dog because he's really high maintenance. It's training day for canine Cash and his handler Brock McCardle. You turn on it. Cash is sniffing out prairie dog holes. In this case, looking for local endangered species. So he's using his nose to locate these animals so we can collect data on them uh, to see how healthy they are, to count them, to see how many there are. Cash is part of a three dog team, a pilot program led by Colorado Parks and Wildlife. So it's another tool that we are using to uh, just diversify what we have in our back pocket to help manage the wildlife. Each dog has a different job, a unique ability, but all three can sniff out the bad guys, and poachers the specifically. Cash actually found the remains of this animal uh, along some aspen trees up in the mountains and from that I was able to connect the dots and actually talk to the hunters and get a full confession. It's a unique team seldom talked about but all the while proving vital to protecting Colorado's wildlife. Hopefully we can expand on the program and diversify and get more dogs statewide. At Bar Lake State Park. That's a good boy, that's a good boy. I'm Eric Lou for Denver 7. It's going to be a beautiful start to our day. Clearing skies in the mountains and now across the plains. Gorgeous. You can see from Loveland Ski Area. Really pretty start to the week. Right now we're looking at 60s to start. We'll be in the 70s though by about 10 o'clock. Mid to upper 70s. And then mostly sunny with some highs near 90 between 2 and 4. Now, the normal high today is 89, so we're going to be pretty close to that number all week long. Take a look at Futurecast. Skies will clear out, again, out on the eastern plains. Some of the clouds and even a little fog that we saw this morning clearing up. Mid to upper 80s by lunch and then highs this afternoon, again, right around 90. We will get some thunderstorms popping up between about 2.30 and 3 o'clock here along the front range, although our risk for severe weather here is going to be low. We could get some stronger storms, though, popping up over the northeastern corner of the state later tonight after about 10 10 to 11 o'clock. 60s again early Tuesday morning. Aurora Public Schools heading back to school tomorrow. Those kids are going to be getting off the bus tomorrow with temperatures in the low to mid 90s. And yet again, we've got a few more thunderstorms possible in the afternoon. So it's going to be a pretty hot couple of days for some of those kids heading back to school. Uh, we do a Broncos training camp this morning starting up at 915. 70s to start with about 85 degrees by noon at the end of practice. Storms developing after all of that between about two and three tomorrow will be at 92 so it's going to be a few degrees warmer on tuesday uh, for those kids that are still on summer break we've got some good pool weather tomorrow a few late day storms but it's pretty sunny and hot in denver with highs right around 92 to end the week we'll see some upper 80s you guys with a chance for a few storms on friday and then upper 80s both saturday and sunday all right thank you lisa and thank you for watching this denver 7 now update make sure you check back here later today for another update and download the free denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. Have a great day.